What's up, everyone? It is matinee day. It's Wednesday, May 22nd, and we are live at 5 here at Broadway.com. I'm Paul Wontor. And I'm Beth Stevens. And we're joined by Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And, oh my God, Beth, we get to talk about our favorite musical, The Prom. The Prom. Again. Again. Who's here? Hitmaker Casey Nicola is here, the director choreographer of yes. The Prom and a lot of other shows currently running on Broadway. Tony winner and a Tony nominee this year. Yes, he Can't is. Can't wait to talk to him, but first, today's top five. Two new people are heading to Rodeo Drive. That's right, we have Baby. two. Baby. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Are you good? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. To all of you audio listeners on the podcast, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> we have two new stars in Pretty Woman coming in July. Jillian Mueller, no relation. No relation. Not part of the dynasty. Not part of the dynasty. And no relation to Robert Mueller. Just no relation. Uh, <laughs> and Rent Live's Brennan Hunt, who's also a country recording artist, so I'm told, will take over the roles currently played by Samantha Barks and Andy but Carl. But Brennan famously... Rent Live's Brennan Hunt. I said it. Well, but mm -hmm. famous, he, he hurt okay. himself. He, he, the, the whole reason why they couldn't go live, remember? Yeah. Was, but they were then, like semi-live. Yeah. Rent semi-live. Yeah, rent rent yeah. sort of live. Um, <laughs> What's happening today? It's a two-show We're excited. Day. We can talk about the prom. It's a two-show day. Uh, they will step into the roles on July 22nd, and Sam Barks, I get to call her Sam because she did our vlog, sure. and Andy Carl, the Andy Carl, Although will I take... Although I think when she was here, I think I actually said, do you prefer, and she said Samantha. Samantha Barks. So call her Samantha back. Miss Barks and Mr. Carl will take their final bows on July 21st. So check out these new stars in Pretty Woman this summer. And the doctor is heading back for a second helping. There have been a lot of uh, OBGYNs over at Waitress. It's because the best the show's singing been running a really long time. Mm -hmm. But Eric Bergen is heading back. He's putting the, the robe on again. The, what's robe. That? What is that called? Co uh, coat. coat. Doctor's coat. coat? Well, okay. the, he's going to be the doctor. Okay. Uh, in Waitress for a second engagement this summer, June 4th through July 21st, he is, of course, succeeding Jeremy Jordan, uh, who will play his final performance June 2nd. And just want to Broadway.com. Audience Choice Award for Favorite Replacement. As you do. No pressure, Eric, though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Eric told us uh, that doing the show the first time was one of the greatest experiences he's ever, he's oh, ever had. Nice. And he's thrilled to say uh, that he's coming back for seconds. It's a food reference. Not the OBGYN thing. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Eric uh, was memorably in the Jersey Boys he film. Was. And, he was. And on Broadway as uh, Bob Gaudi. Oh, he did the national tour and then the movie, right? That's what it was. Um, and he's currently on Madam Secretary, and he will be joining Shoshana Bean over at the diner. And this show about this Disney star is getting a transfer in the UK. The life, not the life. I know. I know. I know. I'm sorry. I'm I know. sorry. I'm we got excited it. about the life, but we're not talking about the life I lead. <laughs> Featuring Miles Jopp as Mary Poppins film star David Tomlinson. David Tomlinson in the original Mary Poppins played Mr. Banks. This is oh. a solo play about uh, that star and his meeting with Walt Disney. That's oh, interesting. About. Yes. It's already had a UK premiere and now it will go to the West End. Written by James Kettle and co-directed by Selena Cadell and Dee Dee Hopkins. And uh, yeah, so that's what it's about. It's about him meeting Walt Disney and their his meeting was full of adventure and heartbreak. There must be a lot of there, there must, must be, be a some lot drama of story there. There, there must be some drama there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it plays the Wyndham Theater from September 16th through the 21st. And a whole lot of magic is heading to Canada. Of course, she's speaking of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. You may know that show. I've heard of it. Um, it's a big hit on Broadway, of course. Now in its second. I haven't That's seen right. the, the no, we James. We haven't seen James Snyder yet. As uh, we have to hear him say Harry Potter. Can we Potter. get tickets? I don't even. know. It's right. the hey James, are you watching? <laughs> Hi. <I don't> <laughs> How you doing? Miss we you. need to get James we Snyder here soon. We do. Okay. Anyway, we love James Snyder. Um, <laughs> I went on a whole tangent. You certainly. Uh, have. So it's gonna it's going to Canada. It will be playing uh, for Toronto audiences at the Ed Mervish Theater in fall of 2020. That's a little while away. So um, casting will be announced at a later date, which means they haven't cast it yet, which means you if could you're go in. You've already made your Snyder, Broadway debut. Huh? <laughs> You've already made your Broadway debut. I'm just saying. That's not happening. <laughs> uh, anyway, all the Canadians are going to want to be in that because it's going to run forever. And Hamilton is going down under. Hamilton... You thought it had already taken over the world, but you are wrong. It hasn't conquered Australia yet, but it's going there in 2021. 
That's far. Wow. Oh, really? March okay. 2021 at the Sydney Lyric Theatre. They really plan ahead, those Australians. <laughs> Hamilton will go to Australia, and of course, there's no casting announced yet because probably half the cast hasn't been born yet. But when they are, they can or start in, in the Sydney in high Lyric. School. They're definitely in high school. They're in high school now. Um, start learning those moves, go. kids. <laughs> so I guess we should just plan our trip to Australia for 2021. Sure. There you uh, go. Also on the site, yes. um, we have a feature with uh, Dust McEnough and Sergio Trujillo. Of who Ain't are Too nominated Proud. for Tony's for Ain't Too Proud. Director. And of course, a long collaboration. Choreographer. They did what Jersey else? Boys, in case you didn't know. Megan Hilty has her Live from Lincoln Center concert on Friday. And Miss Caitlin Moynihan had a little chat with her. And yeah, she asked about Smash because Megan Hilty. It's the obvious uh, thing you asked duh. about. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, yesterday, Kelly O'Hara was here. Mm -hmm. And right. she was talking up a Harmless Harvest Coconut Water. We're really talking about this. Because she was hoping yeah. to get a sponsorship. So she was talking it up. Stephanie and Styles kind of reminded her to talk it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, it looks like maybe it worked. I because think it worked. at 427, Harmless Harvest Coconut Water tweeted and said, we see you. Is that what they we said? We see you, Kelly. So I don't know. Maybe there's some cartons of coconut water on their way over to Studio 54. That'd be nice. It's nice to know that they're viewers. Hi, Harmless. It would feel <laughs> really good if we made that happen for her. <laughs> there's a nice. lot of magic here at Live at Five. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm going to get out of here. Oh, uh, thank you so much for being here, Beth. Caitlin, tell everyone about The Hitmaker. Yes. Today we have the director choreographer, Casey Nicola, here to celebrate his most recent Tony nomination for Best Direction of a Musical for one of our favorite shows, The Prom, um, which, yeah, he also choreographed because he does it all. Uh, the Prom earned seven Tony nominations, including Best Musical, and is now Casey's fourth currently running show on Broadway. You get points if you can name them all. Uh, this nomination marks Casey's 10th overall for his combined work as director and choreographer. Please follow at The Prom prom musical on social media to stay up to date on this Tony nominated musical and leave all of your questions in the comments below. Please welcome Casey and Paul. Thank you, Kate. Woo! Do you, you, you blush when I call you the hit maker? <laughs> a little bit. It's fun. It's a fun okay, I like it. I like it. I'll get used to it. Yeah, I'm into okay, it. I like it. Awesome. You do, you do, uh, you're, you're, you're good at this. This Thank is, you. this is a thing. This is a thing. You're very good at You have four shows running yep. on Broadway and actually you had 10 nominations before this year. This is actually your 11th My nomination. 11, yes. for, yeah, uh, for, the, for the prom, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and you won, of course, uh, for the Book of Mormon, yes. which is, by the way, still running. Yes. I don't know if you knew that. It's right, yes. right, oh, very, yes. very right close. Right the corner. Right across the street. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you visit your different theaters? And I do. Yeah. What, what yeah. is the pro, what is that? What's the process of that like? What's the schedule? How often do you sort of need to well, drop in at the it, long running it shows? It depends. You know, mm -hmm. it it depends. Usually, when there's a milestone like a new right. Price and Cunningham go in, or there's a new Genie, or mm -hmm. that, or that kind of thing. Right. Or a new Regina, or a new whatever. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's fun. Yeah, it is fun. It's fun to sort of. It is like fun. It's fun, and then also there's the thing about you go and you're like, I'm so excited to see it, and then it's you know people overacting and that kind of thing, and it just happens in the long run. So you have to. So then I have to have an emergency you, rehearsal so you, like so the next week and so get everyone, everyone back on track. I mean, I used to hear stories about like I don't know why this specifically, but the cast of a chorus line whenever Michael Bennett would be in the wings, like they'd be doing the show, uh -huh. and suddenly he'd be in the wings like watching, and they would all be like, uh, uh. Yeah. So, are you that guy? Do you? Are you um, is everyone terrified when? Casey shows up because you seem like a really friendly. I usually like to see them, so I yeah. usually go backstage and say hi first. Okay, you yeah. don't you don't want to. Uh... I don't usually do the sneak attack, and yeah. whenever I is, it's <laughs> whenever I do, it's a little disastrous because then all of a sudden you also can kind of see when the cast is like, oh god, he's here, and then all of a sudden there's a little more energy, and then I'll look to the associate and I'll be like, they just figured it out, didn't mm -hmm. they? He's like, yep, just now. Mm -hmm. How are things in prom land? Uh, I just saw the show last week. Uh -huh. It's in great shape. You were in the show last I week. I was in the show. <laughs> I was in this <laughs> show for a different view. Like 90 seconds ish. Yeah. A good a good 90 seconds. It was terrifying, but but thank you. <laughs> yeah. I was I almost asked for a private um, moment with you, but your team your team is amazing. Well, awesome. Yes, you have a great Casey team. Hushin, yes. Amazing. It's fantastic. Yeah. And stage management, it was yeah, it's a well-oiled machine over there. And the cast yeah. is amazing. I love them all. So it made it pretty painless. Great. Um, but we love that show so much. And I've seen it, I believe, five times oh now. I, lo I love the prom. Um, what When you go and, and go to the Long Acre, I'm also amazed at how I took my parents to see it. Uh -huh. And it was so beautiful to see how well it worked for them. Oh, that's awesome. And, and to really see you know, how, you know, despite... The, the insider stuff 
it's really beautifully, uh, you, you, you did a beautiful job of, you and the writers did a beautiful job of making sure it was balanced in all the right ways. Right. And, and that, that was, I know, a really important part of this because it's about Broadway people and regular people right. sort of crashing, right? Yeah, and it was no easy feat. You know, that's yeah. the thing that took us the longest. You know, even, you know, we did it at the, at the Alliance Theater in yep. Atlanta two years ago. And that's what we learned too. We thought we had it, and we were like, we when we were done there, we're like, we didn't have it. Mm. You know, it, everything felt like it was the whole thing was a musical comedy. The regular people were musical comedy people, and it didn't work to have a musical, you know, descend on a musical. Mm. So mm -hmm. we really worked hard to have the town feel real, so that the musical comedy element felt like it was its own thing. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Because I saw the show at the Alliance, uh -huh. and I remember I, I came back and I said, "It's perfect. Bring it to Broadway." <laughs> When you're, especially when you're working on something, how do you sort of keep that eye and not get, it, it seems like such a tricky thing to not sort of believe your own hype and always, what, what, what how do you, is it just paying attention to the audience and your collaborators? Yeah, it's really a pay, paying attention to my gut more than anything. Mm. And then watching the previews like this, up and down the, up and down the road to mm -hmm. see like how people are responding. But I think it's just something you instinctually know. I don't think that I'm, I think that I'm, one of the things I, I do well is I can be objective when I'm in the audience. Mm. I can sit there and be an audience member as opposed okay. to being myself. And I think that sometimes I watch the show and I've just in, I love musical theater mode and that's like great. And then sometimes, and then the next night I'll watch it as a scientist mm -hmm. and just have a whole different way I'm looking at it. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are the nights that the most work gets done. Mm -hmm. It's been so great recently watching, um, so many stars are showing up at the prom. Uh -huh. and, and I know, Patty, I heard like Patti LuPone like leapt to her feet for Beth Level. Too. And Lin-Manuel Miranda is losing his mind. I mean, it's so great because Peter Dinklage was there. I mean, uh -huh. like all of these stars are showing up and loving it. Um, wh what do you think it is about this show that is sort of, it's, what is the secret here that is just really getting to people? Well, I think that it's smartly written by the writers. Yeah. And I think that the unexpected clash of the two worlds you're talking about is, you know, it's a completely original musical, mm -hmm. so no one knows what they're going to expect yet, and I don't think mm -hmm. they know when they see our Broadway types starting at the top of the show that they're going to end up taking a journey like that. Yeah. You know, that all of a sudden they're going to be like, how did he end up being almost father figure to Emma and being her BFF? Mm -hmm. You know, and you're going like, what is happening here? And how did, you know, a couple get, become romantic? And mm -hmm. I, I think it's really cool because you have no idea where the story's going. Mm -hmm. And it acts up, ends up just being human about everyone. I think that's what people respond to. Mm -hmm. And it's super, super funny. And then all of a sudden you're bawling. You're like, wait, when yeah. did that happen? Screw you. Yeah. You know, and I think that's, that's part of it. And I, I love how much everyone responds to it. The teens respond to it. Mm -hmm. The parents respond to it. People that, you know, my friend's dad who's like, I just you know, don't expect this. And I think it's the best musical I've ever seen. Like, people that you would not expect are mm -hmm. absolutely loving it. And I think there is something for everyone in it because it's human. I don't think we ever set out to go like, there needs to be something for everyone. Yeah. I think we just set out to tell the story. Yeah, does it still move you when you when you watch it? You get to get no, to you? No, not at all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the answer is I mean, yes. I watched, like, I watched the cast on Colbert the other night, uh -huh. and just, I watched it in the morning because I wasn't able to go there, and, and um, just ball, like loud yeah. bawling in my, in my yeah. office. Uh, I just love it. I'm so moved by the show all the time, and I'm also so moved by the cast uh, that they can still keep it honest every night. Because you know the thing I talk about with going to a long-running show and stuff, mm -hmm. it's very, it's very tempting for actors to do more. You know, they get a little, they're bored and want to do something else, and right. they don't even know they're doing it. Yeah. And so far, I just kept like, you know, scaring the crap out of them, saying, mm -hmm. "You, b no one better overdo mm -hmm. it because you're not going to be likable." Mm -hmm. And everyone has really stayed with it, and I'm so proud of them for that. And they really love the show so much, and they, they've all stayed so honest. And hopefully, and I think now they know how to do it mm -hmm. because I just kept saying from day one before we even got them on stage. This is going to be the downfall, is if you try to do too much and start mm -hmm. doing more. Right. And they've all refrained, mm -hmm. which is not an easy thing to do for mm -hmm. people that are those kind of great comic actors. You know what my favorite sort of unexpected sweet moment right now is? Uh, we look to you, Michael. Pot the the Isn't scene. He the best. At Applebee's. He's, the apples and bees. He's, uh, and he's also one all of these the, beautiful little moments like that. Yeah, and he's he's also a lot of the reason that the show is so grounded now. Mm. Uh, you know, his the addition of him to the company yeah. was so fantastic because yeah. he's just he's just so grounded. Yeah, 
but that whole cast. I mean, and they're, I know you were working fantastic. with friends, and we've talked. There's yeah. been a lot of talk about this, and yeah. how you, you know, called Beth Level and called everyone and just said, "Hey, I'm doing a thing, and we're right. doing a reading," and just brought them together, and now they're doing it every night. Yeah, pretty much. And then uh, M- Michael was a last minute yeah. re- replacement, yeah. but even then, we're sitting. I was like, okay, who would I want to see in this part? And I just all of a sudden went, Michael Potts. Wow. And then everyone said, Oh my gosh, where is it? Get him in here right now to mm-hmm. just meet us. And he didn't have to audition. He just like sort of mm-hmm. sat with us and we chatted and. It was so unexpected for him, and it was great. He's such a good addition. How would you define the Casey Nicola touch? What 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 are you good at? <laughs> what what is what is your um, your thing that you bring to projects? Well, I mean, I have to, like I said before, I have to be an audience member, and I think because I mean, I'm such a lover of musical comedy. Mm-hmm. Always have been since I was a kid. And By the way, something rotten is like the funniest. Yeah. I mean, that, <laughs> that that's another show I Thank love you. so much. Yeah. Um, but. I think the best musical theater performers are truthful yet heightened. Mm. So it's not about being campy, it's mm-hmm. not about being commenty, it's not about being cheesy, it's mm-hmm. about being honest, but because for the, by the sheer fact that they have to sing, they have to be a little bit more than than just like doing TV acting. Mm-hmm. Because then it then it seems cheesy when they start to sing. Right. So they have to be able to know how to build it before a number happens. Right. So if you think of the characters uh, and the performances in Mean Girls and, uh-huh. and Book of Mormon and Aladdin, they all sort right. of have have elements of that. Yeah, and they all yeah. have a buoyant <laughs> yes. energy. Oh to yeah, them. there's the definitely are, an energy uh, to Casey yeah, Nicholas. It's definitely buoyant. Which, by the way, you had also in the eight shows you started on. You were actually a company member in eight, in Broadway, eight Broadway shows, shows. Yeah. before you moved over to the creative side. Right, and you were one of those ensemble people that was very memorable. <laughs> okay. You were one of those people that popped. Had no hair. That's you, why. You popped <laughs> and you could I jump high. <laughs> you could jump high and you didn't look like a typical Broadway dancer. Right. And and it was always fun. You were, you, you know, really one of those people. And then it was like, well, look, look that guy became. Isn't that crazy? I mean, like, especially, and I love there's that photo of you and Millie doing the, I know. the jump. The midair, the with, midair with jump. With Noah Racy and I, and he's just a little higher than I am. <laughs> Would you I was ever, looking at a picture, I'm like, oh man, my knees aren't high enough. We could Photoshop that. <laughs> yeah, um, please. <laughs> uh, any of the shows you started on Broadway, would you ever want to tackle any of those shows? Or are you not really into revivals? No, you... I mean, there aren't many I want to revive, because um, I just like creating something new. Mm-hmm. I mean, I did Dream Girls in London, which yes. I had the best time. Fantastic. That's my, that's my favorite show Are we going to see that on Broadway? I hope so. Okay. I hope so. We're, st- okay. we're all still waiting. We hope it happens Okay, because it was a beautiful production. Yeah, I just, just I dazzling. Yeah. I love it. And it was great. You know, Henry Krieger yeah. was there and let, you know, we changed stuff together. Yeah. He wrote a new song for Act Two. It was really fun. Mm-hmm. Really fun. And aren't you working on Some Like It Hot now? Yes, I am. Some Like It Hot, you guys. New Some Like It Hot. And this is uh, Shaman and Whitman. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Matthew Lopez doing the book. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. And how's that going? It's going great. Do you want to tell me the cast? Um, or no, we don't have any cast titles. Yet. We have no cast yet. <laughs> but um, but Act One is done. Oh, great. And we're starting on Act Two. So, do you, when you're working on a project, are you always thinking? Is it always in your brain? Are you always thinking about um, things? You... Well, not yet because it's not written. <laughs> okay. You, you know, I, I mean, I certainly am, is, am there at this point mm-hmm. like a facilitator. So I help them. You know, we we talk about stuff. I say, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Okay. And then, and I also let. The writers use me as much or as little as they want. If uh-huh. they'd rather wait and have me sort of be fresh eyes, but usually they're like, "We want to hear from you now," and huh. then we do, and then they go away and do homework, and then we meet again, and they uh-huh. go away and do homework, and we meet again. Do you have any? Um, do you miss performing at all? Not in the least. Not in the no, least. No, I don't. Nope, you're good. No, nope. yeah, I'm good. You're good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, how do you feel about the Tonys? How do you feel about um, you know this is award season? Everyone has you know. Big signs in front of their theaters about <laughs> nominations, and you know they well, put stickers on people, and it's a lot. I think there's like a you know, and it whatever ends. it is, a, my, it's, it, a lot of exhausted people yeah. <laughs> walking around with a smile and glazed eyes. <laughs> you yeah. know, but but it's great and it's yeah. exciting, and you still have those moments of of pinching yourself and going, yeah. I cannot believe that that 18 year old boy that came and like you know saw Dreamgirls from the yeah. back of the house yeah. is you know has yeah. shows on Broadway. It's are, you, are you excited to uh, take the prom on the road? And, oh, I hope so. I mean, it I seems so. like it would be great. You know, it's when um, you know Ryan Murphy uh-huh. is making a, a film right. of, of the prom, yeah. and you know, he what did he say? Something he said that he thinks has the power to save people. I mean, I I think so. I know that seems like such a 
pretentious thing to say yeah. a little bit, but well, if you know and, the no, show, it's not pretentious. Totally, but I mean, it, I, it's something I would say because I feel like I would sound like that. But but it, it really is true, and I feel like I yeah. can say that well with this show because you know there have been so many teens just coming up during intermission and saying. I want to thank you so much for this. This has gotten made me feel so strong. And one girl even like looked over her shoulder and said, "My dad is here tonight. I'm going to come out to him this weekend." Mm. And I just like I was like, "That's why you, that's mm -hmm. why you do it." And yes, I think we will save people in a way, or not necessarily say. I guess the saving part, but yes, I think we are honestly. Yeah. But I also think that we're just making things incredibly easier for people mm -hmm. because they have something to look at and they have something that has encouraged them or inspired them to mm -hmm. be able to to be comfortable with who they are. Mm -hmm. And it's a hell of a lot of fun. And it's a hell of a lot of fun. And Brooke Shosmanskis and <laughs> Beth Level. I mean, come on, yeah, Chris Sieber, Angie Schwartz. I mean, this, yeah. Caitlin Kinnanen. Oh, she's amazing. How exciting that she And Izzy got, McCullough, too, you know, both a, of them. Oh, I know, they're, they're, all, they're all so, so fantastic. Right. Um, I could talk about the prom forever. <laughs> In fact, we do, here at Broadway.com. Thank you. Um, Hey, Caitlin. Yes. What are the people online asking? Yes, we got Casey. a whole lot of questions. Oh, wow. So, uh, Tizip or Zip, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Uh, they would like to know, is your process of directing different when you direct a show based on already existing material versus a brand new show with no source material? Um, the style of directing isn't mm -hmm. really different, but um, the way you approach it is a little different, you know, because you have nothing to go off of if you're doing it originally. Mm -hmm. You go, then we could go here, then we could do that, then we could do this. So you know you have to sort of stay true at least to the spirit of the film and uh, some of the moments that you want to see. But like, for, for instance, on, on Mean Girls, you know, we took a lot of liberties and, you know, Tina was not precious at all about Tina what, Fey. Tina Fey. Tina what, what we, what she cut when she said we got to get rid of that. We'll do this, and then you know we know we have to do certain things. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I, I, th I think that you have to serve the story, whatever the story is, whether it's original or, uh, mm -hmm. but of course, if it's original, you don't know what the story is yet, <laughs> and then you got to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, so Mary wants to know what is it like to create such a high energy vibe on set when you're choreographing and teaching these dance moves to these oh, great this, ensembles. This is a young ensemble too. The, oh yeah, the high school they're, kids. They're they're very young. A lot of Broadway debuts, right? Yeah, thirteen. Oh wow, thirteen. Yeah. And um, it's it's incredible actually. And these kids in particular are so energetic, but also they work so hard. And you know that that to me is the best. And also, we talked bef right before they started. We talked, and we had a you know. I really was like, you have to be present for this. You have to pay attention. You have to learn from these people that are in the show. And they did, and it was the best feeling because it, it went both ways. You know, like they would just sit and watch Beth and Brooks do their numbers and like clap. I mean, no one was on their phones during rehearsal, and no one was you know not paying attention. Everyone was watching all the time. And then. On the other hand, the adults are like, you know, we're doing all the dance numbers, and you know, Beth and Brooks will walk in and go like, um, can we watch the kids? Aww. And then they did. And it was it was really a love fest in yeah. the best way. And it was kind of a respect fest too, mm. you know, because everyone was just so respectful of each other. And and it really it was it was one of the best experiences I've had for that reason. And also working with Bob and Matt and Chad, who I've worked with all of them on different shows and the same shows. Um we just had a shorthand, and same thing with all the all the all the designers. Mm -hmm. I'd worked with all of them before, and we all get along so well. So it just was an easy process. Even though putting a show, a new show together, is not necessarily easy, this was an easy process in that way. Matt and Chad, uh, their score for this show is so fantastic because it really does. It's doing a lot of things at once with, with different yeah. styles and and just how it tells a story. What is it like working with them? Do they? Um, are they the kind of guys that sort of like take a task and then something like just flies out of them or what, what was it Pretty like much. hearing the They're, songs and yeah I mean it's a that's I think one of my favorite things as director mm. is when you uh, you know you get an email and it just says you know Sklar Bar and all of a sudden you're like <laughs> oh my god I got a song today I got a song this morning and I listen to it and you know my heart drops if I don't think it's right. Right. But if I think it's sure. right, I'm just I love it. Or I'll, or I'll be sitting and watching my computer and crying, and I'm going, yeah. it's the, it's the best. And yeah. I love those guys, and they write from the heart so well. Yeah. Everything they've done, Elf. I love their score in Elf. Love their score in this. It's 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 absolute joy. And and you know and Bob, and Chad work so well together too. Mm. It's really mm -hmm. it's it's really was a special experience. Awesome. I love that. And this will be our last question. So Shane would like to know if you could choose one character from one of your current shows to interact with one from another, who would you like to see meet? 
god, that's the best question ever. But I have to think about it for a second. Yeah. But I will just say right away. I don't know. I'm just like, I would say Damien and the genie. <laughs> Yes. Oh. That tap number would be great. That's they genius. could tap together. Damien could be living his best Broadway life, his Disney musical fanatic life. They could do Friend Like Me together. Oh, you know, come yes. on. Come on. I think that would be good. That's amazing. I love it. Here for that. Here for Thank that. you so much for coming Thank by. You. My pleasure. Congratulations on Tony nomination number 11. <laughs> exciting. It's where do you put exciting. all the. You have, you, Kelly O'Hara was here. We were talking about where she puts all the plaques. Is there a wall? Is I, there... Have a, I have a, a shelf in my. Uh, uh, in my office. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Do you have room? You have room for more? Well, uh, I don't have. I don't. I had perfect room for ten, and the other one, I the shelves aren't tall enough. Right. So I have to figure that out. Kelly said the same thing. Yeah, she she, said said she had a perfect the, spot my, for six, and yeah, now she has seven. I put just my eleventh on top of another one, and I it's odd like, numbers it, it really, are the worst. It just it unnerves me looking at it. I just <laughs> feel like okay, that's not right. I don't like it. <laughs> but we're very happy it happened. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I'm not taking this one. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, go see the prom at the Long Acre Theater and cheer this guy on on Tony night. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, for my pleasure. Great Thanks. to see you. Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us in a podcast form by searching for uh, hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Tony nominee Lily Cooper all about Tootsie.